first of all, second win in the AFL Trophy, solid performance. Yeah, we did what we had to do, and we were able to use our group to keep up their fitness levels and keep the the the, the group all involved in, in everything we do. So yeah, there's loads of positives. Um, pleased with the performance and, and pleased with the result. And Ryan Watts and Stephen Walker got their first goals to the clubs, both well taken as well. It's, it must do good for their confidence as well. Yeah, it's always nice for players on the personal level to to score goals. So now that they they can be pleased with that, but the all run team team play from from all the lads, they can be pleased with how we didn't choose tonight because sometimes the games because it's not really a team; it's just a collection of lads really who needed a game. So to go and perform the way they did is is a big credit to them. So. Uh, we're, we're really pleased at the end of the game of how it went for us. Well, it's nice to keep that winning feeling going as well, isn't it, in the, in the squad? Well, Tramia has to keep winning games because that's the the, the, the commit, that's that's the what the, the asks us of of the fan base and of the the owner and the staff and all the rest of it. So yeah, we have to keep winning. We have to keep getting into every game and trying win every game that we're playing. And Joe Murphy was back in goal. Nice to get a clean sheet on his return as well. Yeah, very good. I think over the course of the season, now we've got a lot of clean sheets. That's, a, that's all, all credit to the boys working very hard and take great pride in defending well as well. So, no, it's, uh, it was good that Joe came in and, and he did a, a, a great job too. Next up is the visit of Colchester. How much do you enjoy the Friday night at Prenton Park? Is, is it a different atmosphere? It's a unique atmosphere. It's... It's, it's, it really is unique to uh, Tramia because of the history of Friday nights, how much everybody loves them. And so we're delighted that we can still get one in. So Friday night will be terrific. I believe the weather's going to be good. So you can expect some extra fans. So it should be great for the for the atmosphere. And the, I'm sure the players will, will embrace that and, and really enjoy playing under the, flight, uh, the floodlights on a Friday night. And if you do win, does it always feel better because you can put your feet up on a Saturday while you're the team battling out? That's the same with every game. You, you, you want to try and win every game. You'd enjoy winning every game because you can enjoy it for a couple of hours, but then you're very quickly turned around. But no, it's it's, it's special uh, Friday nights. And quite rightly, yeah, if you get a result, you you, you have an extra special weekend. So the, the, the motivation is there for us to, to try and go and get that. It's the first time since we've spoken to you since uh, Peter Clark's brace of goals last week. Ian Dawes called him Benjamin Button after the game. Has that been his new nickname this week? Or... <laughs> Say again. No, he's, he's, he's a great example of, I've said before, of great professionalism, great desire. He want to keep playing well. He still has really high standards on and off the pitch. Lives the right way, prepares the right way and recovers the right way and deserves all the plaudits that come his way. So we're just delighted that it plays for us. And his determination to win was matched by the rest of the players as well. To get that winning goal last week, how happy were you that their heads didn't drop after they equalised? Well, we're not programmed today. That we're, we're told to keep going. The most important goal is the next one. So keep the heads down and just make sure that you get the next goal. Um, so they, they, we were very thankful that we were able to do that. But it looked like we were going to do that anyway because the way that we were playing. So no, I was I was really pleased with the performance and, and, and the goals and it was a, a big result for us. Ian Dawes also mentioned about the continued improvement over the last few games. Well, how pleasing is it to see all that work and the planning you've done on the training pitch come to fruition as well? Well, it's good that we're, we're where we are, but we still believe that we can get better. We still want to keep improving and that will happen with time because relationships will build and things will, relationships will grow and, from that, the performances will get better. So we'll continue to keep getting better. But certainly we're a, we feel we're in a good place at the minute, but we still know that it's going to take a lot of hard work to stay there and keep moving it forward and we'll keep pushing it um, all the time in order to keep trying to improve. And it's Colchester, as I mentioned, they've lost, they've not won at home, but their away form is really good, isn't it? They've won two and drawn three. So it's not going to be easy, is it, tomorrow? No, good, good set of players, very good squad. Unbelievable experience within the group, played for good clubs. So you know that, that there's a lot of talent in that group. So you've got to make sure that you turn up your best performance because if you don't, you know that they're well capable of, of causing you a lot of problems because of the talent that they have in the squad. And any fitness issues? 
No, we're okay. Everybody's back. Um, Carl McDonald's also back from the suspension, so we should have a a, a full uh, quarter to, to choose from. Okay, cheers, Mickey. Thanks, Carl. Mickey, um, good run of results recently. It looks like momentum is growing. Uh, when Tramie went on a decent run of form last year, you, your predecessor told me that he didn't believe in momentum, only in hard work. What's what's your own view on that? Well, I never really liked speaking about what happens before me or anything. That's, that's a manager's unwritten rule. Um, I, I certainly like, I, I believe in hard work, absolutely. I think the minute that you start to speak that you can take things for granted and just because you think you've won the last game that you just turn up for this one and get a result, then you're you're on a hiding in, in, in nothing. You you go the way that you want it to go. It is always about hard work. It's it's about the learning from the game before, hitting the levels that got you the result the game before or the training session before, and keep improving all the time. And whatever the game asks you on Friday night, then prepared to go and answer that. But you must come with the right attitude and not rely on things that you believe. Um, will 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 only be enough, and one of them would be momentum. You've got yeah, it's great to have won the last couple of games, but take all you have from that, but still turn up and 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 understand that you still got to work very very hard in order to go and try and get a result against a, a, a very good uh, Colchester team. Is it easier for you to implement your own ideas and instructions when the players are seeing the fruits of their labour over a couple, you know, a couple of positive results? Yeah, because you. You've got proof in the pudding, if you like, of what it took to get the results. Any ideas or things that we implemented um, have, have worked. Uh, so the players will buy into that then. So you just got to keep building on it and make sure that you find the consistency of whatever it is that you think that you're doing that's giving you a good chance of winning games. So no, it's, 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 it's a continuous development thing. We want to keep getting better. We, we don't believe we should ever say that we are a place where we're, we're satisfied. We keep wanting to try and get better all the time and find out about ourselves every game and, and just keep trying to improve. We spoke to Kieran Morris before, who, who felt that this was uh, a tram air team that should be well capable of promotion. Uh, a lot of new faces that have come in and around him, but he, you know he's still there in the team. And how, how pleased have you been with his contribution so far this season? Oh, very pleased, but not surprised because I think he's a really talented player. He's the type of player that right away, as soon as I came back and I realised he was still here, wanted me to work with him again because I know, obviously brought him to Tranmere and I know him very well. I know him as a person. I know his mentality and I know his technical ability and I know what he's capable of. And I know if um, you've got players like him in the group, you've got a good chance of winning games of football. Well, I think when he originally came to Tranmere, you know, they're looking at players who, who are going to be able to to perform well in, in League One. And, and and I think in that season that they were back in League One, he was certainly one of those performers. When you were recruiting this summer, do you, are you thinking that far ahead? You're looking at players that I think this, not only will this guy be able to do a job in League Two, but also in the league above it. Or, or, or can you not look that far ahead when you're trying to plan promotion out of a division? Um, I don't know. That's, that's that, It's difficult to, to answer all of that. I mean... Listen, first and foremost, I, I believe he was, a, he was a player that would enable us immediately to try and win games. I know the way he played and I know what I wanted to try and do here and I knew what he was capable of. It would be an added bonus um, if we're, we're successful this season and get, and get back to League One, that you know that you that Kieran would handle that, no problem. That would be an added bonus, but I think we'd be thinking more about the immediate and that would be now um, that... I know what Kieran's capable of, and I know um, what a good chance he gives us of, of getting results. And for him, scoring goals and performing at this level. Just on Friday night football, as a player yourself, did you did you prefer playing on Fridays for Tramere, or, or were you not bothered? Yeah, that's I, I, I did enjoy it because the atmosphere is great. You get the whole weekend usually off. Um, and you can watch everybody else's misery over the weekend if you get a positive result. So it's, it's, it's great, but you've got to go and get the positive result. But it is unique to, to um, the world and Birkenhead, these Friday night games, the, the, the people love it, they enjoy it. It's a great start to the weekend to go and watch football uh, on a Friday night and uh, under the floodlights. And it, it, it really is a unique atmosphere. It's, 
it's very lively. Um, so it's, it's, it's a great place to, to, to play. But of course, you've got to go and work hard and go and try and get that result. Yeah, the weekend off bit certainly isn't lost on me, I can tell you. But um, have you spoken to the players at all about what it, how, you know how different it might be playing on a Friday? Because I'm sure some of them maybe you know aren't that ingrained in Tramier's uh, sort of prestige with Friday night fixtures. We'll probably think, well, we're playing on a Friday night, no difference. No, I haven't spoken to them about it. I think that when they turn up for the game and they, and they, they, they get a taste for the environment, they'll see that it's something different. They'll know that. But all the time, that if they're, they're, they're told to go and represent the fans and go and play for the fans all the time, that's why we're here. So I would be a bit worried if we turned up on Friday and were able to do anything any different because why haven't we found that in other weeks, weekends? Um, but the atmosphere is, is different, is unique. Um, and it is really enjoyable to play in front of, and I'm sure the players will be ready and, and, and really enjoy it. But those old crowds who used to watch the likes of uh, Johnny Morrissey exciting them up the wing on a Friday night really used to, you know, whip the crowd up. Um, and uh, we can we expect sort of more of the same maybe from uh, Cogley or McManaman tomorrow? Is that the way you're going to go for it tomorrow? We, we always do. We, we hope so. I mean, Morris was a special player. He's a, still a good friend of mine. He's a very, very special player. Um, and if we ever get players of that quality again um, here, uh, we'll be delighted. But certainly we have our own um, players now that, that can go out there and make a name for themselves and, and put themselves into a bit of history playing for Tramia. So that's what we encourage them to do, to create their own um, history. Uh, and go there and, and have the fans talking about them in years to come. That's a key point as well, isn't it? Because in, in this day and age in football, you know, if, if you're at a club for more than two seasons, you've you've normally done quite well, haven't you? So it, it's it could be quite difficult to be to to you know establish yourself as a as a fan's favourite. Well, people do have the opportunity to do that by making special things happen, don't they? Well, of course, you. you... You only have to go through the, the, the recent history of tram. I just met Steve McNulty there, who's now back at the club working in the community. He's a big fan's favourite. So, yeah, if you do well for these supporters, they'll be very, very grateful and, and they'll always uh, remember what you did for them. Um, and this, this group gets the opportunity to go and do that as well now. Just final one from me. Um, I think it's Sunday is uh, Mental Health Awareness Day. And I know that uh, the club does a lot to help people in the local community and uh, particularly heightened through the uh, through the pandemic. But I just wanted to ask you specifically about uh, yourself and players um, and and the sort of the microscope that you might work under in the public eye. Do you, do you feel that uh, managers and players receive enough support in terms of their mental health at the moment? Um, it is available for us to, to speak to people. We're encouraged to do the same as what, what any member of the public would do. And that would be to, to communicate with people, go and ask for help, surround yourself with people who you trust and communicate with them if you're having a tough time. But don't be afraid to speak out. We're no different to anybody else. I have tough times. Sometimes I, I, I feel very low and I know that I have, I've, I've got people that I can rely on that I can go and speak to and go and talk about how I feel. If I want to take it to a mere professional level, then we, just like the general public, um, should find out how that they can go and do that. So, no, we, we have the, the ability to be able to go and ask for help. But the important thing is, and the message would be to everybody is go ask, because you're not on your own. Everybody has tough times. We have tough times. We might look like we disguise it at times, but I tell you, we suffer as well. But we, we uh, have learned that it's important to go and speak to people and go and ask for uh, for some help and, and just for, for somebody to talk to um, that, that can help you to put together little, little strategies of how to get through the moments because you're always, you always know at the, the end you always come through it, it just washes over your light waves, but always at the other end, you know that you will recover and you will come through it and, and things will look a little bit better then. Has that changed since when you were a player? Massively changed. I think the whole thing about mental health has changed. 
back then it was about being tough and, and getting through. I think now people uh, understand that it's everybody can't deal with things like that. And it's important that you go and get help if, it, uh, if, if you need it. And it's, it's, becoming, it's becoming much, much better now in terms of people accepting that uh, it, it is, it is, um, that people are able to go there and, and, and go and speak to people. It, it doesn't get looked down on upon anymore as weakness. It actually, it's looked upon as strength that you are able to yeah, put yourself out there and say, yeah, do you know what? I am. Um, I need a wee bit of help here. What do you think about this? And this is how I feel. And how can I help myself get through that? Brilliant. Thanks very much, Mickey. Appreciate it. Hi, hi, Mickey. Uh, this is uh, Jim Conlon here from RCB Radio Sport Ireland. Uh, Grant, how are you? Uh, I would like, I would like to ask you about Lee O'Connor there, uh, the Celtic uh, defender that you brought on loan. Uh, Lee has played for his country there once or twice. Uh, a player of that caliber playing for you. Was you? I know you brought him back again, in again on deadline day. Was he one of the main targets that you wanted at the club? He yeah, knew for a long time that we that he fitted the, the, the type of player that we wanted to bring back to Tranmere and play for us. He's a fantastic lad. He's got an unbelievable mentality and he has a real desire to want to keep improving. He, at the minute, is a very good player in his own right and playing for his country. He's not with us at the minute. He's away. He's away with Ireland. But we're delighted that we have him here. He's, he's, he's a terrific uh, player and a, and a great guy. So, no, we, we're, we're delighted that he's here. And was it a, a tough one to secure on deadline day in terms of getting that loan or the line, or was there agreement with Celtic, or, or was there much interest in Lee's uh, signature? We knew from pretty much the day that I get, came back that we wanted to bring him back, but Celtic didn't have a manager at the time. Mm. And then but we kept in contact with him and we, we made sure that they knew that when the time came that they were able to make a decision that we would, be, we would want to be um, one of his options. And then uh, as soon as the manager came in and things started to settle down a little bit and they, they started to see getting the loan players out as the next priority, then uh, it, it was very easy and very quickly done. And, and Lee uh, made his way down to the world. And I suppose, uh, Mickey, uh, just I was t t touched on with Kieran there uh, previously, the experience of having Premier League players like Jay, Jay Spearing and Callum yeah. McNamara in the side. I've just lost you there. Hang on a sec. Sorry. There we go. We're back. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry. I, I was just going to ask you there about the, uh, the experience of working with ex Premier League players like Jay Spearing and Callum McNamara, Callum played with Wigan, Jay Spearing at Liverpool and Bolton. To have that sort of leadership in the dressing room, to be able to go to these guys ahead of pivotal games, that must be a real coup uh, in terms of a League Two team to have players that have played at that high level, only recently as well. I think because of the size of the football club, we'll always have players that have played at higher levels because the demands to play for Tranmere are unique. It's such a big football club and such a demanding foot fan base. It is a fantastic place to play football. And for all players that are available to us, it is still a tough place to come and play. So it is a big challenge for even ex-Premier League players to come here and play because it is such a big football club. You know, we, we are not embarrassed here by bringing Premier League players here. We actually have Premier League facilities and a Premier League ground and a brilliant fan base that matches that. So the demands on us are always very high. So that's why we, we attract the types of players to the football club, because they enjoy the challenge. And finally, for me, Mickey, you mentioned the challenge and the challenge is Friday night against Colchester. They're probably finding themselves in a misplaced sort of position in the league. They're probably much better than what they find themselves at the moment. Uh, what are you expecting from Colchester uh, come Friday night? Well, it was a tough game. This league is, is, has changed this season from the one that I left. There's a lot of talented players and a lot of talented teams that play a, a, a real real top-end um, technical type of football now. And the tempo has, has certainly gone up as well in, in playing that style of play. So Colchester on uh, Friday night will be no different. It'll be a tactical, technical game. Played at a real good tempo. 
it'll be no different to a lot of the games that were played recently. The, the, you, you're going to have to beat your best to, for over 94, 95 minutes in order to try and get a result. So Friday night, we know going into it, we're going to have to bring the best version of ourselves in order to try and get a result.